you guys welcome back to our channel i'm courtney anderson this is everyday anderson so today i'm going to be bringing you guys another dinner meal idea this one is pretty simple but it does take a little bit more steps i'm going to be making a chicken pot pie tonight so i used to do a uh, one pie crust or one pie pan and then i started doing a deep dish then I started doing two regular pies and now we're at the point where my kids are getting bigger and we need a little bit more. So I'm going to be doing a rectangle 13 by 9 inch um, pie, well, I guess pan, casserole dish. And hopefully I have enough um, flour for the pie crust because I am going to be making the pie crust from scratch. So like I said, it's a little bit um, more steps than I usually have in my quick and easy kind of 30 minute dinner. But if you want to do this, um, you can definitely buy a pie crust from the store and do the pies. Or you can do the rollout pie crust um, in the refrigerated section or even do a phyllo dough. So people do it all kinds of different ways, you guys. And I'm going to show you just one way today. So let's get started. Okay, you guys, so to get started, I have some chicken breasts here. And so I'm just going to start by, um, I cut them up already into kind of big cubes because with a pot pie, you definitely want to be able to taste those big chunks of chicken. And I did do breasts today, but a lot of times I do boneless, skinless thighs, you guys, and those are so good. And they create a good amount of fat too for the, um, for the gravy that we're going to be making, but... I decided to do breast today so that was some pepper I'm gonna go in with some salt you guys also you know some of the key things that I like I've got some onion powder throw some of that in I've got some Tony's seasoned salt and I'm gonna throw some of that in not too much today because we are gonna be seasoning our gravy and garlic powder y'all know it starts to get to my nose let me get a spoon I'm gonna go with my smoked paprika from the farmer's market and you guys know I love that and some chili powder I'm not gonna go too heavy today you guys also let me see if I can find my ground celery So now I got my Dutch oven. You guys, um, let me get this started. So much I want to tell y'all. Get that on high. First of all, I ran out of my other olive oil, so I had a chance to get my favorite olive oil back, which is um, by Branch and Vine. This company, I think it's in a couple of states, but it's in Georgia in two different locations. But I always order it because it comes pretty fast uh, when I order it. So I love that. Let me get my light right for you guys. Go ahead and throw some of that in here. You guys, that I'm going to be putting in is some of the, um, I don't know if this is enough. I have another bag in there. Some peas and carrots because we eat this all the time. We actually had some, I think, yesterday. And so you can do broccoli, you guys. Broccoli and cheese. Cut your broccoli up kind of small. Um, don't have too much of the stems in there. It will cook down just fine. I mean, there's so many things that you can do with this. Um, this is starting to get hot. Yeah, but this is what we're going to do today. I think I'm going to do peas and carrots. Sometimes I do peas and carrots and corn, if that's weird. I don't know. You can put potatoes in a pot pie. It's your pot pie. Do whatever you want to do, okay? So let me stick that over there. Let me find a spoon or something. I'll use a spatula, you guys, and I'm just going to go in and heat these up. You don't have to cook it. Breast cook fast, but you don't have to make sure they're done just to get a little brownness around them, okay? Today, when I decided to do a pot pie, I completely forgot this was the last little bit of flour I had. And so, I don't know. Hopefully, this is going to be enough to make my pie crust. We'll see. So, with your crust, you guys, remember, you can do... Top crust, bottom crust, only top crust. You can do biscuits. I like to do biscuit pot pie where I just basically lay out the gravy and everything in the pan and put the biscuits on top. I think that's really good. That's not my husband's favorite. He loves when I actually do the top and bottom crust. So, okay.
plain. And let me see if I can save some of this liquid too. Oh. I'm at a weird angle. I can smell that paprika, you guys. I love smoked paprika. Let me get this in here. And I'll use that a little bit later. But right now, I kind of need a dry skillet. I'm going to be going back in with a little bit of olive oil. All right, so now I'm going in with my onion, celery, and bell pepper. And I'm making a lot today, you guys, um, because I'm doing that 13 by 9 inch dish. If you have the time to pull some of the sprigs off the time, it will elevate your dish just a little bit. And I dropped a whole one in there. I don't want to do that. So let me put a little bit more oil. We're going to go in. This is a fourth of a cup, and I'm only going to probably use half of this. Let me see. Nope. I use all of it. So it's almost a fourth of a cup. Okay. So when you're making, let me get y'all back over here. When you're making your pot pie, you guys, remember that I'm going to add in some cream and you may be as well adding cream. And so you want to make sure that you start this um, roux off kind of thick. And I got some garlic and you guys know I love to kind of do my garlic press. Let me see if I can get all of it out of here. Let me go in with just a little bit of salt to season up my vegetables. And that is looking good, you guys. So let's crank it up. So whenever you're making your gravy thicken, make sure you crank that temperature up. And let me see if I can show you guys what I got. This is what I bought for the holidays, Tuscany chicken broth. It has, look at that, thyme, marjoram, and oregano. So this actually, and when you smell it, it does smell like it's been seasoned, you guys. And I really liked having this for the holidays. So I have some of that today, and that's what I'm going to be using to thicken up my gravy here. Okay, so let's go ahead and go in. I don't really know how much I'm going to put in here, um, but I do know that I need to save a little space for my cream later on. So I don't want to make it too loose. So this is, how much is this? Four cups, 32 ounces. Let's go in with a little bit before my pan gets too brown down here. Okay. Scrape your sides, you guys. And so now I probably have about a cup left in here. So let me see how this looks. I'm going to go in with all of it. So that was a whole quart. All right, so let's just let this keep getting hot. And once it starts boiling and reducing down, I'm going to add some cream, you guys. Add my chicken in. But we're going to kind of taste it first. So let's go with our vegetables. And these vegetables are gonna add to some of our liquid content as well. That's a big chunk, but it'll break down, you guys. That's enough. I'm not gonna open another bag. Okay, this is actually some green pepper corn new things this time some green peppercorns i don't know if it has a different flavor or not it tastes like peppercorns to me so this is boiling and you know that cream and the cheese is going to help it reduce down a little bit more you guys i'm going to go ahead and taste this for a little bit of flavor Spoke too soon about the peppercorns because I can definitely taste them now. I'm going in with some more onion powder, garlic powder, Tony's. I want to go in with some more salt, you guys, but I'm gonna wait because that cheese is salty, especially the Parmesan cheese. And 
that has a nice little rippling ball and it's thickening up you guys let's see if i can bring that down a little bit more so that's thickening up and once you got that rippling ball go ahead and cut it down to medium medium low so that's good i'm gonna go in with some cheeses let me find my cheeses so i have a little bit of my shaved parmesan you guys just a little bit and so i'm gonna go in with all of that also y'all know i love my ninja blender and i have my freshly grated extra sharp cheddar cheese i'm going in with some of this and you can save some and put it under your crust like your final layer before you put your crust on top and you'll kind of bite down into a nice little cheesy bite you guys so keep that in mind i'm gonna turn it up just a little bit i'm not using all this heavy cream i'm only going to use about a couple of tablespoons there we go most of the pot pies that i like have a creamy type of texture to them you guys but you do whatever you want i'm just gonna put the rest of my cheese in here there we go that would be good um with broccoli and cheese too that um parmesan cheese actually sets it off and i don't think that i really need any more salt and i don't need any of this liquid i don't think that i say but i'm gonna save it just in case this starts to reduce down too much so i'm gonna kind of let this boil away I'm gonna go ahead and throw my chicken back in here. I've got some liquid hanging out at the bottom. So let me just get this back in here. Might as well start cooking down with it. Look how good and hearty that looks. I'm gonna have to come back to this. I'm gonna crank it up, get the temperature up. Okay, you guys, so the gravy the filling is still cooking down so right now we're going to do the pie crust i don't know how much flour i have we're about to find out if i have enough for the top and bottom crust of this 13 by 9 inch pan but either way we're gonna make something work okay so let's see so i have my paddle attachment on my kitchen aid mixer which makes it so simple but i have done this in the ninja blender before with the paddle attachment i did that for many years and it works just fine you guys so let me see if I can, I'm gonna have to pour this flour into here. So this is about one cup. I really need three for this to be successful. And if I have four, that would be even better. Give me some room to play with. So let me see, it's about two, yep. So it has this little kind of marker on the inside that's supposed to let me know when it's a full cup. It's just supposed to be cute. I don't know if I can really bake with this little thing. Oh, you guys, we'll have enough. So there we go. That's three. And I'm gonna go ahead and go for a little bit more and leave some for when I actually start to roll it out, okay? Cool. Get all of that tighten that up and I'm gonna go in with some salt you guys and some sugar and so it's only a couple tablespoons of sugar nothing too too much and so I don't exactly know how much I'm putting in here you guys what I do is once I cut it up into nice um, chunks or nice cubes let me bring you down once i cut it up into nice cubes i like to see where my crumbles are going and if my crumbles are kind of forming really well then i'll stop i'm trying to get this off of here so this is all i do i just cut it up into little squares throw some in there and start it So that is in there, mixing up, and I'm gonna go in with a little bit more. Like I said, I'm probably gonna go ahead and do the full cup. Let's go ahead and throw this in.
And so you can start to see some crumbles forming in there. And that's exactly what you want, you guys. So for my next ingredient, what's gonna make this crust really easy to work with is, I already opened it, Philadelphia cream cheese. Um, I used this for some of the cinnamon roll icing yesterday, and so I still have some. And this is really just a couple of tablespoons. You don't need a lot. It's just enough to get this dough a little work -wittable. <laughs> So what that will do is that will actually um, make the dough easy to work with. So if you're the type of person who doesn't like dealing with pie crust, if you feel like they break apart too easily, if you put like, um, you can do a shortening, uh, what is it, Crisco um, in there. But to me, that gives it like an oily taste, but it's up to you. Um, this is really getting crumbly. So let me stop it. Let me show it to you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop that. We're gonna add our next ingredient in a second. But you can do any type of like soft cheese, Crisco, um, like a, a oil, but something that has a little more firmness to it that won't melt down uh, as quick. And that'll help, help it roll out a little bit better. Or you can do, I've even done like a mascarpone cheese. Like I had mascarpone cheese left over from something. And I did mascarpone cheese and it works the same way as the cream cheese. Um, but it's more expensive and you know who really keeps mascarpone cheese around all the time. I forgot what I was doing with it um, but Yeah, so the cream cheese will make it super easy you guys if you think you can't do pie crust try the cream cheese, okay? All right, you guys so I have some ice water and I never use this much um, I don't know why I keep getting that much in vinegar So what you want to do is just put a little bit of vinegar inside your ice water and you always need vinegar water that was maybe a tablespoon you always need vinegar water for your pie crust it will help to make your crust um crispy and give it that like flakiness um i read somewhere that it helps to break up the gluten and keeps the gluten from being like a chewy strand to more of a crispy strand so you guys So I am back over here at our filling. As you can see, it's reducing down. Make sure you keep stirring this so that your cheese does not burn because the cheese will burn, you guys. So let me turn this off. Like I said, I want it to cool down a little bit before I put it on that pie crust and we'll get ready to roll out the pie crust. Look. Okay, you guys, so I'm just gonna get the, um dough off of here and you can see this is what we look like let me put this down to show you it's just kind of pressable you know and the more that you work it you want your ingredients cold when they come together and some people go through this extra step of keeping the bowl cold you want the cold when you roll it out this dough um because of the extra oil from the cream cheese mascarpone cheese um, crisco whatever you're using it will give you a little more um uh, flexibility than if you were just doing butter um, if you're just doing butter you want it to stay cold you don't it the more you work that butter it's gonna melt down and it's gonna make a mush instead of a crispy pie crust because you want that butter to kind of bake into little pockets inside the pie crust you don't want it to just be one layer but I mean whatever it's still gonna be good flour down you guys and I'll show y'all what this looks like we are gonna make a top and a bottom crust, so leave some of it in here for the top. And make sure that you err on the side of caution, you guys. Make sure that you only get a little bit for the bottom so that you can be sure you have enough for the top. Okay, so I can show you what I still got left in here. And this is what I'm starting out with. And so my ice water was nice and cold. The butter and the cream cheese were cold, so now this is kind of stiff. And the more you press it and roll it, you guys, you're gonna see just how forgiving this dough is. It's gonna keep just stretching and stretching for you without really breaking. And if it does break, it doesn't matter. I don't care. We rolling with it, okay? And just keep making sure you got some flour somewhere. Just keep going and I use my pan 
as a guide. I'll keep coming and looking at my pan and making sure that I'm going the right size. And I gotta have enough for the size too, you guys. So, so you see how it's kind of cracking. I'm just gonna patch it together and keep it moving. All right, y'all. So this looks good. It's kind of, it might be a little short on one side, but that's okay. Go ahead and fold it so we can bring it up on top of our dish. This is a big dish, y'all. And once you get it here, you guys, just kind of patch it around, okay? And just bring your slack inside, patch it around. And this side was a little short, so I'm gonna wind up bringing something over to patch it with. I'm actually gonna patch this with that. And you can put some of that vinegar water on there if you want to. The body heat should be good enough. Okay, you guys, so I have a slotted spoon, and so now I'm just going to fill my pie pan up with, first, I got the slotted spoon because I want to make sure I fill it up with all the goodness, the yummy goodness first, okay? So, let me just um, get all my meat and everything out of here, and then we'll get the liquid out of there, too. And so, you see, I got all my meat and everything in there. Yeah, that's not too bad. I got just a little bit left. And so this is kind of how I like to have mine, you guys. Um, you can fill it up if you want to, but I don't want to have, you know, too much liquid coming at me. Or you could always make it thicker, you guys, and have like a lot of, um, let me get my trivet out the way, have a lot of gravy, but however you want to do it. Okay, so now is our task of putting the second pie crust on. Let me show you guys how to get this done. And the oven is at 425. And once that's heated up, you guys, this is going in. And that acted a lot better than my bottom. Oops, I spoke too soon. Uh-oh. I spoke too soon, y'all. Come on now. Here we go. Give myself enough room and work with this before it gets too hot and melty. That butter starts to melt, you guys. So let me see if I gotta patch something up on this one. So that one laid on top pretty well. So here we go. A couple of little patches, but not too bad. See if I can bring you back just a little bit. Okay, and so just go ahead and use your slack and tap down, fill in those little areas. And so with the small little edges like this, let me get my scissors, the oven is ready. You can cut off a little bit, but you want to leave some, you guys. Um, to roll under. So let me show you that and then I'll do it all the way around. Take it and just create you a nice little lip around here and that's too much for me right there. Create you a nice little lip and you might think that that's too much crust you guys, but when you got a nice crisp crust, I need more right here. 
when you got a nice crisp crust, all it's gonna do is make like a little cracker at the end. And when you bite down into it, you guys, it's gonna just, you're gonna see the layers in this edge that you're rolling up. Okay, and so now this is what I have and I go through and kind of press it around like this. And you can do a little press situation if you want to make it pretty. I don't know, maybe I'll just go in like a little star here, like that, and another one over here. Is that really a star, you guys? I don't know. And I do have some butter that I melted for the top, so um, let me see. Okay, you guys, so save a little butter for the top, okay? So I'm just going to brush a little bit. You don't have to. You can do an egg wash, but I don't like wasting an egg for this. However you want to do it, if you want to make it cute. Okay. All right, so like I said, this is a little bit more work than I normally do, but I do it from time to time because I like a pot pie. My husband loves it, the kids love it. You can't go wrong with a cheesy pot pie, you guys. So I'm gonna put this in the oven until it's really brown and crispy. I don't know how long that's gonna take. The oven is at 425. The chicken is already done, so when this comes out, we're ready to eat, and I'll show you guys what it looks like. But make sure when you take this out, you guys, that you let it rest so that you don't just have a big liquid mess okay you want it to rest and kind of thicken up a little bit cool down um, and then it'll be ready to eat okay you guys that was about 35 45 minutes in the oven at 425 and look at this look at this my kids are making so much noise look at that okay so we have to let it rest for about 10 minutes maybe 15 it'll still be hot trust me and i'm going to show you guys what the final product looks like so stick with me you guys so it's been about 10 minutes and this is ready to dig into let me bring y'all down here so you can see me kind of cut into it i'm going to go into a corner let's just go ahead and dig it on out i'm gonna get a knife crisp for you guys this is gonna be nice and crispy Ooh. Mm. so this is why you let it rest so now you have a nice perfectly formed pot pie it's not running let me show you this one not running you guys we got a nice little slice to it and now dinner is going to be served my kids are gonna like enjoy this let me get y'all up here so my kids are gonna enjoy this they always love when i fix pot pie you guys let me let y'all get in here look at that mm. steam still coming off of it huh. peas and carrots cheesy filling My husband always gets mad when I'm doing a, oh, I'm doing a video and I'm tasting it for y'all. Let me show y'all the crust. Here's a piece of that crust. Can you see the layers? Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Hold on. Let me show you a little bit more. Look at that. Go ahead and buy your pie crust, you guys, if you don't want to. You know, go through all that making a pie crust. It's good. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. mm. We're gonna enjoy this. Oh, hold on. Mm. It's hot. Make sure y'all let me know where you're checking in from. Everyday Anderson on YouTube, www.everydayandersons.com everyday anderson on instagram okay make sure you check me out on youtube and subscribe you guys and i'll see you next video